2017 so far is the second hottest year on record due to global warming, according to the Guardian Dana Yulichi. So what is debatable about global warming? The U.S. Executive Administration will tell you that global warming isn't real in today's day and age. Because it's cold outside, the Earth can't be cumulatively heated. Donald Trump has publicly said, wow, 25 degrees below zero, record cold and snow spell, global warming anyone? Or record low temperatures and massive amounts of snow. Where the hell is global warming? Quotes from CNN.com, November 11, 2016. What our president doesn't understand is that Earth's temperature is cumulatively heating up, causing extreme weather patterns. We've seen a lot of them this year, including Hurricane Harvey and extreme heat waves and a lot of snow in the east. 97% or more of actively publishing climate scientists agree Earth's cumulative temperature is rising, according to NASA.com on climate change evidence. So about half of the U.S. population is in denial of global warming, or they at least don't understand it. This is kind of like denying that dogs bark without hearing a dog ever bark or seeing a dog before. The fact that almost half of America doesn't understand or believe in climate change, including our president, is a massive issue. And if we don't address it, we're going to end up not having a home. So even with the global push by leaders to lower CO2 emissions, we have still raised CO2 emissions by 2%. We cannot change, if we cannot change our leadership, we will fall into, we will become first place in CO2 emissions globally with every country, including China and India because both these countries are participating in lowering CO2 emissions. And we're still trying to deny it, like, like fools. By continuing to emit CO2 gases and greenhouse gases, we will have an unlivable planet by the end of our lifetimes, and as we've heard before in other speeches, we're gonna have to move. So the path to overcoming climate change will be difficult. We will need to convince our president of climate change, which won't be very likely or replace them in three years with someone that actually understands the issue. While we wait, though, to elect a new president, I'd say we have to lower our personal CO2 emissions every day. We can do this by replacing an older car with a newer car that's more fuel efficient, or investing in an electric car, or even just riding a bike. You can do that, too. There's also things like electric bikes coming out, which are very efficient in electric skateboards. These alternative transportations are great for lowering CO2, lowering CO2, and if we all utilize them by the billions globally, one day we can, we can help lower CO2 emissions at, without our legislative administrative branches doing anything, just personally. So if climate change isn't stopped, the Earth's cumulative temperature is projected to rise 4 to 8 degrees by the end of the century, according to NASA.com on climate change. Once the Arctic permafrost melts, releasing methane, and the polar ice caps melt, lowering the albedo effect, we are actually in trouble in the next decade of raising the cumulative temperature five degrees Celsius. Based, and uh, to put this in perspective, at the Paris Agreement last year, which Donald Trump attended, the entire globe, 197 nations and national leaders decided that they wanted to keep cumulative temperature raising under two degrees Celsius by 2050. And what I just said, in 10 years, we could raise cumulative temp temperatures by five degrees Celsius. And this is um, by Erica Rosenthal from the Paris Agreement, an essential deal for the planet, published June 1st, 2017. Unfortunately, however, for the US's reputation, Donald Trump actually withdrew himself from the Paris Agreement, and so we were the only country that didn't participate in the Donald Trump. Um, so due to cumulative heating, oceans will rise destroying cities like Tokyo, New York, San Francisco, London, Rio, etc. This is New York, oh sorry about that. This is New York at one meter of flooding at two degrees Celsius. And this was the agreed upon level of uh, cumulative temperature raising at 2050. This is what they want the world to look like at 2050. And it could be double this in 10 years. Due to, due to the uh, cumulative heating and the melting of polar ice caps causing the sea levels to rise. So, kind of glazed over on most climate change talks, the tropics will actually be unlivable due to the Earth's rising heat, creating temperatures predicted to be around 120 degrees Fahrenheit minimum, and also uh, partnering with 100 degrees, 100% uh, humidity 
creating unlivable temperatures according to what, when, the, when will the planet be too hot for humans by David Wells Walsh. So basically saying, this is the equator. No one, anyone that lives there will be cooked from the inside out if they live there for, let's say, a year. They will die. They will not be able to live there if uh, temperatures reach over 4 degrees Celsius cumulatively. So the Earth has experienced five mass extinctions before the one we are living through right now. The most notorious was 252 million years ago. It began when carbon warmed the planet five degrees cumulatively, accelerating when that warming triggered the release of methane in the Arctic by melting the permafrost, and ended 97% of life on Earth, according to the Uninhabitable Earth New York Magazine by David Wall Wallace Wells, uh, published July 9, 2017. As I already said, we're in danger of melting the permafrost within the next decade. So this extinction is quite possible to happen to us once again. Obviously no one was there when that happened, so we're not sure exactly how it will happen, but according to the signs that are out there, we could there could be another extinction due to climate change. We are currently adding CO2 to the atmosphere 10 times faster than the last extinction 252 million years ago. And this has created a mentalist like Stephen Hawking to say that we will need to colonize another planet to survive. And this has created Elon Musk's um, venture to uh, inhabit Mars. So we must stop climate change. I will simplify one of the most pressing global issues into a three-step process for us. Number one, get the message out. We need to start a political movement inside the US to get the consequences shown to everyone inside the US to make sure that the other 50% that doesn't believe in climate change, that just thinks, whatever, it's cold, it's hot, it doesn't matter, it's the climate. They need to understand that there could be a serious issue here. Step two, we need to do our, our we need to do our part, and we can be riding electric bikes, we can be riding bicycles, we can be using fuel efficient cars. We just need to do our part and help lower CO two emissions. And finally, step three, we need to vote. We need to put representatives in office that will represent us correctly at a global level when everyone's coming together in something like the Paris Agreement. We need someone there that's actually going to rep represent us correctly. So if you don't want to risk going extinct to the population or having to move planets, I'd say it's damn time we fix climate change. Thank you.